Welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be doing part two of our tutorial series on how to make a soccer slash football game in Unity. So this is what we are going to be doing today. We are going to be making a character controller to move our character around the scene. So yeah, this is what it looks like when it's finished. We're not going to go through and write the code line by line. I've already written the code, but we will go over the code and you'll have a chance to copy it if you would like. But yeah, let's dive in. Before we dive in, I want to delete some of the stuff that came with this URP package. I'm going to delete the readme. We're going to delete the scenes. We're going to leave the settings, but we are going to name it to URP settings and the tutorial info delete and this universal render pipeline global settings. We're going to drag it into the URP settings. So now all we have is a duck hive folder and a URP settings folder. Let's go into our duck hive folder. Before we get into it, we are going to be using the new input system. So you need to install that before we get started. To do that, just go to the package manager under Unity Re Registry, just search input and you'll see the input system. Just click install or download and install if you need to do that and then it should prompt you to restart your project click yes to go ahead and restart it and then we'll be on the same page once you got that you need to make a player input actions so you just right click create input actions open it up you need to make an action map i named mine player and then you need to under actions you need to make one called move this move for the action type it's a value and the control type is a vector two. And when you click this little plus icon to do an add binding, select add up, down, left, right, composite. And what that'll do is that'll give you four fields for you to specify which is the up input, which is the down input, which is the left, which is the right. And you wanna do this two times, unless you just like don't care to use a gamepad or you don't care to use a keyboard one, but to get it so it's working with both the gamepad and the keyboard, we want to uh, do two. So do two composites and just go through and underneath the path, just go, this is gamepad. So you go under gamepad and left stick up is what we want for this. And just go through each one and do that. When you get done, click the save asset button right here. You can also check this auto save uh, field to automatically save it. But we're just we're going to leave that blank and we are we've already saved the asset. So we can close out of this. And you also want to check this generate C sharp class. Uh, you want to check that and then click apply. And once you do that, we can get started on our scripting uh, underneath duck hive. We made a scripts folder and then we made a character folder inside of that. And we created a character controller script, a character state script and under in a states folder, which we created an idle state and a move state. So if you can't tell by that, we are going to be using a state machine to handle our character controller. So by using a state machine, it'll just make it or it'll give us more control to be able to do some cooler stuff in an easier way down the road. So anyways, uh, let's let's start with the character state. Character state it is an abstract class. Uh, and it's just got a character controller in it. We've got our constructor right here. Then we've just got some abstract methods for inner state, update state, fix update state, and exit state. So that's just kind of like a template that we can use for our state machine. So there's that character state class if you want to copy it. Then we've also got our character controller, which is a good 77 lines. Uh, but yeah, we've got a serialized field for our rigid body our move speed and our camera transform. We could also just get the rigid body to get the component and our awake method if we wanted to, but I like to just keep it like this. Keeps the code cleaner. Got our player input actions reference right there. That we actually do get it in the awake method or we don't get it, we just create a new player input actions. That's why we created that, we generated that C sharp class for it. Got our character state or our current state which is using a character state and we've got our move input here this is a getter uh to so we can access our camera transform uh we could just make our camera transform public but this is just a better way of doing things here's our start method 
Uh, in our start, we're going to go ahead and transition to an idle state. This will be our default state or the first state that we transition to. And we also want to set the constraints on the rigid body. We want to freeze the rotation completely on all axes. And then we've got our on enable. This is just registering our input actions. Basically just gets our input ready to be able to use it. And then our on disable, this is unregistering. This is doing the opposite of what's happening on enable. And we've got our on move method. This just sets the move input to whatever our input is for our controller. Then we've got our update and our fix update. And this is this is where the state machine really keeps the controller nice and clean, or it really helps keep it nice and clean. Because all it's going to do is basically say, what is the current state? Well, whatever the current state is, run the update state of that current state. So all the logic that we want for our like our idle class, if there was anything we wanted it to do in the update, there is. And we'll get to that in a second. There's our fix update, our transition to state. This is just a method we need to be able to switch states back and forth. Then we've got our move method. So this is what we'll call to actually move the character. Once we read all our, all our correct inputs, uh, we can call this method from other states to move the character. Then we've got our get move input method, which is just getting our move input. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, let's look at our idle class. So our idle class is pretty short and simple. It's basically just checking to see if there's any input. And if there is any input, then we want to transition to the move state. And that's, that is it really for this, for this class. And then on our move state is pretty short and simple as well is just in our update state method we are checking to say hey is there any input right here if there is and we want to move else if there's not any input we need to go back to the idle state so that's what we do with that so you probably can't read this over here so if you're trying to copy this here's this line right here actually let's do this so you can see the whole line uh, we'll just make it a little bit smaller there now you can see that whole line and that's it for our scripting come to our scene to our character capsule you need to add a rigid body to it and you go ahead and add that character controller script that we made so be sure to drag in the rigid body there set the move speed to whatever you want two seems to be a pretty good value for right now and then drag in the camera to the main camera field. Now the camera, all we did was just position it to where we want it for now. I don't know if we will use Cinema Machine or if we'll do anything else with the camera other than just leave it in one spot. We'll worry about that later if we decide to do that. But here are the values for the position I've got it in. So for, for the position, it's negative 30 on the X, 25 on the Y, zero on the Z, Rotation is 40 on the X, 90 on the Y, and zero on the Z. So now if we hit play, you should be able to move around the scene relative to the camera. And we've done it in a way that makes it easier to add on to, easier to work with, done it in a very clean way. And we've done it in a way that's going to make it easy to swap out with an AI brain later down the road, uh, which is very important because AI is going to be a large part of our game. Thanks for watching, guys. In the next video, we are going to make it so we can get possession of the ball whenever we run into it and release the ball when we press the shoot or pass button. I will see you guys in the next one.